Hello everyone, it's Thomas Jujubee, and finally, welcome back to another Common Rider Geats unboxing video. As you can tell, I'm very, I'm very excited to finally unbox Geats toys again because it's been a while. I haven't unboxed or gotten any new Geats toys since the first unboxing video I made where I unboxed the Desire Driver, which you should probably check out. Here is the box we are going to be opening in this video. Uh, before I open it, I do want to give a disclaimer that in this box is not the Zombie Race Buckle in Buffa ID Core, the Magnum Shooter 40X, the Command, not the Command, the Arrow and Shield Buckle set, or the first RCF figure, because as I mentioned before, I got the US release of those, and I still have not received that US release shipment. So <laughs> we're unboxing other stuff from Geats. And as I'm still waiting for that other stuff, as soon as I get those, I will be unboxing those. I know a lot of you have asked, where are the Geats unboxings? Hey, I would like to release Geats unboxings, but the stuff I ordered hasn't arrived, except for this stuff, which I ordered recently. So, here's a Geats unboxing. Sorry to interrupt. If you want to get any of the items in this video, be sure to check out Baiyi, today's sponsor, the website that lets you buy anything from Japan. Baiyi works as a middleman website that allows you to order from tons of Japanese stores like Mercari, Rakuten, Amazon Japan, Yahoo Japan, and much more. If you search by using the Japanese names, you can look through tons of different results for used or brand new items straight from Japan. All prices are even in Japanese yen and American dollars so you can tell how much exactly you are paying. Once you find something that you want from the vast assortments, all you have to do is click it and there's a very simple process to order it. All Baiyi does is request a small fee with each purchase. That's it. From there, the item will be shipped to Baiyi's warehouse, where they'll hold onto it for up to 30 days for free. At any point, you can pay for your package to be shipped straight to you, or you can combine multiple packages and ship them to you as one big package. If you want to use Baiyi for yourself, thanks to them sponsoring this video, there's a link down in the description that will not only let you make your own Baiyi account, but will also provide you with a coupon that gives you 2,000 yen off on your first purchase. Be sure to check them out if you want a new way to order tokusatsu toys or buy other items straight from Japan. Now let's get back to the unboxing. There we go. Big. Big packing material! A buy special. That's that's a lot of stuff. Goodbye, box. Now let's open this big mess of bubble wrap. Wow, wowee. Ah, stuff is falling. Okay, I'm gonna put this down now. Here's this bubble wrap. Whee! So I figure we might as well go in in debut order. So we have to start then with armed buckles. Nope. Oh, they're attached together. Let's go. Wow, it feels very nice to actually hold more armed buckles. As with most unboxings, you've probably seen the stuff here for a while and I'm just getting it to, I'm getting to it now because I'm always late. So, um, belt. Geats has not used either of these, but uh, we might as well use them. That's a weird glitch. <laughs> My desire driver has been acting a little buggy recently, but after, okay, well now, Pulling back the claws is kind of fun. And I know, as everyone's mentioned, it doesn't it doesn't actually look like the one that Nago uses, the claws, but... I know everyone's gonna ask in the comments, are you buying the Vision Driver? Yes, I have already pre-ordered that. that <laughs> whatever that arrives to me, I will be doing an unboxing. I'll probably just do a whole, like just one whole video unboxing just the Vision Driver, cause it's... It's nice. <laughs> 
Ninja, our first... Actually, this will be my first uh, bigger buckle since my Desire Driver arrived. I mean, actually, uh, as I said, these are all my first buckles since my Desire Driver arrived. So I don't know what point I was trying to make there. This is the first big buckle that was released since the Desire Driver itself came out because that came with Zombie. Um, but I, I bought Zombie separately, so I don't have it yet. So... Oh, there's two pieces of tape. Damn you, Bandai manufacturers. And here we have... Oh, the box fell. Ninja! And... Oh! It came with a Tycoon Core ID! You guys are all liars! It does come with the Tycoon... <laughs> don't, don't replay the footage. Uh... Actually, it's probably the thumbnail of the video. So, yes, I did purchase a certain Command Twin Buckle set. And as such, I did get a certain Tycoon Core Campaign uh, item thing. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. If I'm looking in order, and I'm looking at Ninja now, we might as well skip a little bit ahead in terms of release order and pull out our Tycoon Core ID. Or my Tycoon Core ID. It's not ours, it's mine. Now I'm a tycoon, and I would like to use, um, arrow, but yeah, you know. Actually, I do want to mess with ninja on its own first, because... That's very satisfying to see spit in person. I really like how the, the individual strikes for all the buckles have their own, like, sound effects. And it, it just makes it weirder the victories and combined attacks all use, like, the same generic sounds. Like, it's like you get more unique sounds using the buckles individually than you do mixing and matching. But, like, I feel like the whole point of the toy line is you mix and match because there's this big blank spot here for you to put stuff. Speaking of putting stuff there... I love, I, I love that, uh, the ninja boost sound. Like, I love how, like, they make all ninja-y and stuff. Everything about this, like, the, the usage in the show, of course, is very cool. The form of ninja boost is probably, might be one of my favorite forms in the show. Obviously, green and red work very well. And they've got this little bit of red, like, on the top of the ninja form. So it really flows into the red boost legs and same with the toy where we've got nice really nice pink and you got the pink gears in here that then match with the red over here it's very nice oh i did it wrong Henshin! Uh, what, what's a ninja pose? Oh, there we go. <laughs> ninja pose. We haven't seen this in the show yet. We haven't actually seen anyone combine two buckles that aren't boost, one of them being boost or one of them being like fever slot or obviously twin command because that works together. And it, it's giving me this theory that maybe you're not supposed to merge buckles together. Like, I don't know, like Tycoon has Magnum. I don't know why he doesn't use Magnum. Or like uh, Buffa, when Buffa would switch into Ninja, he did take out Zombie and another time it seemed like he was going to take out Zombie. So it's like, why not use Zombie 
and ninja i feel like maybe there's like some lore reason like they can't mix buckles like this because obviously as the sounds they've just stuck the two jingles after each other if you notice every big buckle has like a unique ready fight like sound bite after the announcement of ready fight and then when you use boost you notice like it combines them so like zombie will do the wet sound and the race car or no the motorcycle so i kind of would have liked if when you use two together it still combined their sounds even if the jingles aren't brand new but then there's also this weird thing where the jingles have a set like order and actually that applies to the armed buckles as well did you notice i i've modded my <laughs> i've modded my magnum so now it actually doesn't always activate which is a bit of my fault but Now you can spin it hard and it'll do the things. I'll leave a link in the description to the videos I used as a tutorial. So you notice that Ninja's on the bottom now, Magnum's Ready Fight is always going to be used if it's used with Ninja, no matter the order. It's Obviously, it's because of the way they've programmed it. If you look at the the, the listings of the, the raised buckles, they have like a set order in the, the belt. It goes top to bottom. Same with their, their little their pin numbers here. It's on the toys. This is 64. This is 62. Unless it's boost, of course, because then that'll change the jingle. It'll play whichever has the higher number and then whichever has the lower number. And that applies to these, the, the mini buckles as well. Because Hammer has a one of the lower uh, numbers. Chain Array is higher than Hammer. I did the wrong order. That's also how the legend buckles determine the ordering. Actually, it's really how everything determines the ordering because the mini buckles are the lowest numbers and the bigger buckles are the highest numbers. So when you combine a big buckle and a mini buckle, it's using the same programming to play the highest number first, a big buckle, then it plays the lowest number, a mini buckle. So it does, you know, the ordering you expect. And same thing with the, when you use a legend buckle or a big buckle, it'll play the big buckle then the legend buckle, or the legend buckle, then the small buckle, or the armed buckle. If you use like a small one and a big one, like the ordering makes sense. But then when you start pairing like ones of the same type, that's when it starts getting a bit weird. Uh, and I, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of just a nitpick for me. Like if I used Magnum Ninja, I would like for the Magnum sound to play first because that's the one at the top. Or if I used Hammer Chain Array, I would like Hammer to play first because that's the one on the top. But... I, I think they programmed it that way because the idea is you can revolve and it doesn't change anything. You can put whatever on the same side. So, whatever. I mean, it's still it's still really cool to have mix and match like this. So I can't really complain. It's just the sounds are a bit in a weird order. Uh, honestly, if I had to pick between the sounds playing the right order or the ready fights getting mixed for the big buckles, I prefer the ready fights getting mixed. I feel like that adds that level of mix and match that the the ordering of the buckle sounds wouldn't really change as much so i'm swear i'm like the only person who's ever talked about this let alone cares enough about it to talk about it in a youtube video more armed buckles <laughs> and since we only have two cores i guess i'll show off the forms on the box where we got tycoon and geats which is so funny to me i don't know why they've done it like this because Tycoon never used drill and Geats never used propeller. It's as simple as that. Same thing with this box. He never used chain array. Geats never used claw, but they're on the box. Drill and propeller. Woo! Funny, funny little buckles. And here you can start to see that the buckles are kind of just remolds of each other. These are the same. This is the same gimmick, right? You just move it up. And if you look close, they both have like little holes. And I bring that up too because this is a remold of armed water because it does the exact same like little rotation gimmick. But I can't show that off.
I don't know why I laughed at that. I just thought it was funny. It makes a little goofy propeller, like, helicopter sound. They're very simple. You look at them and you're like, all right, that's what they do. They do, like, a little thing, little thingy, that's it. Put them in the belt. They make a couple sounds. That's it. They're, like, very cheap. They're very, like, fun to use. I, I love it. I really love it. Like, especially, again, because we have these things to, like, go alongside it. So it's, like, it doesn't feel like, uh, like... Oh, this is like such a bad, cheap gimmick. Cause this is like the secondary part of it. Like I feel like this is the main gimmick and these are like the little addition parts to it. I kind of went in depth like why I think this is so cool in the Desire Driver video, but I, I've really got to keep reiterating it. Like I love this toy line. This is so unique. You're probably wondering where's the Ninja Dueler? If the weapon isn't an integral part of the form's transformation or if it reads buckles like the Magnum Shooter, um, I'm skipping it for now. I'll definitely come back to it eventually, but for now, I, I I don't know. They don't really do a whole lot, so I don't feel the need to get them. Monsters, goofy out buckle. <laughs> well, we got the leaks that uh we were getting some monster buckle, monster raise buckle. I think the leaks said kaiju, so I was like a kaiju buckle, as in like Godzilla and the Power Rangers monsters, like big monster thing. And the belt came out, and the sounds were hacked, and it was like goofy monster sounds like it went from big scary kaiju form to like monsters inc wow this is a really nice core i really like this one uh the, the, like it's like all the others kind of like they're like kind of milky like translucent transparent this one's like really transparent like there's no milkiness to it and i think that's interesting <laughs> It's a core ID in the belt. Actually, it's very satisfying to have this because uh, it reminds me of when Punk Jack was mute and he was like funny and stuff. Not to say he's not still cool, but I don't know. I liked him when he was a funny little, funny little guy and was mute. Kind of like this buckle is a, a funny little guy. What is his henchman pose? He's like. Tension. I really like how it's like a unique buckle, like the way it works, obviously, because it has its own unique standby, and you have to toggle it on and off. I think it's cool. Like, yeah, like every other belt you'd have to or buckle, you'd have to just activate it immediately. Or you activate it immediately, you get the strike. But with this one, you activate it immediately and it, it you have to activate it again. I mean, it's, that's about it. I think it's cool that it does that and then it implements itself into the form. It's the only big buckle form that doesn't have a weapon. It's just the form. And then like, it's kind of implied like the, the big powerful fists are the weapon now. Um, but I, I just like, it's like, it's a different form in the show and they've reflected that ever so slightly with the toys. Cause it's still like essentially a normal raise buckle, but it's got a little bit of different functionality. Henshin! I forgot it had like little <laughs> like announcer ring sounds. That's fun. I don't know why we haven't seen this in the show yet. It could have been used like in the debut of Monster. Like um, Geats was using Boost when he got Monster. So it would have made sense if he just did Monster Boost. You could have him go straight into Monster Boost. So you debuted the form as Monster Boost first. And then Punk Jack debuts just Monster because obviously the toy comes with his core ID because it's his main buckle. But 
Yeah. It was... I have so many little nitpicks and stuff about Geats and its toy line, but that's because, like, I love the show so much. Like, I love it so much that I want it to be the best it can be. So I see, like, a bunch of little nitpicks, and I'm, I'm pointing them out because I'm like, if you did this, I would like you even more <laughs> that's right like they haven't been using like a lot of armed buckles like in the second slot at all like i feel like if i was a common rider geats rider i would have my main buckle on the top and i'd always be using some kind of armed buckle i don't know why they're not always doing that like especially in the final battle the one thing that really like gets to me nago just uses propeller you're gonna go in with just an armed weapon okay when she has claw she could have done propeller claw just like she did claw hammer is the only double armed weapon form we've seen so they are possible but for some reason only nago's chosen to have done that and she could have done it twice speaking of nago next up is her buckle i want to take a second to congratulate nago for being like the first female rider to have the first different toy in the show because this is the first race buckle with sounds Every other time when it's a woman rider, they'll be like premium Bandai or the same belt another character uses. But in this case, they're like, well, they obviously all use the same belt. Geats obviously uses this briefly and they get to put them on the box, but they put them on all of the boxes. And in this case, it's like, well, it, she's used it more and it's it's got sounds and stuff. So speaking of the sounds. Now let's... And then really cool debut music plays. I find it interesting they gave it sounds though. Like the sounds don't really do anything other than play little standbys. But they they put it in. They gave it to the girl. It's her main toy. So. God, the, the jingle, like, the sounds itself are also super cool. Like, I love... I love this little... This little standby, whatever, bite. Super cool. Now let's do Nago Beat Boost. Beat Boost is a really cool form. Or not... <laughs> really... It is a really cool form. It's also a really cool form name. That's what I was trying to say. It's a cool name. Uh, <laughs> good old, good old Evil G music. Henshin! Next up is another buckle with sounds. As everyone has been saying, this is the, the Hyper Muteki raise buckle, which is accurate. Why, why is it upside down? Why, why? Bandai is crazy, bro. I don't know what to tell you. Very shiny. If there's, if there's something I like, it's, it's a toy with gold chrome and four pointed stars, I guess. Oh. Why won't it? do the thing mine is broken Yeah, I guess you have to stick it on like all the way. 
It's like if I'm pushing it down all the way, it doesn't work. Sometimes. Shut up. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess I'm just stupid. No. Okay, okay. Golden fever, 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 golden fever. What the? The way it's to work properly first. Golden fever, golden fever, golden fever, golden fever. It it didn't rotate, but. Jackpot hit gamers. We did it golden fever. Don't talk over the toy. This is my my favorite buckle I mean because I love the standby I love its usage in the show like it's so interesting to have a toy the form it makes is just The other forms if I spun it on Magnum It's the same as this like these do the same thing in the show and then like the other layer onto that is that the power up mode of it is that they it, it's just the same thing twice like it, they did the double form thing they did that early they, they they got to that early and they made it a power up for everyone so everyone gets to do that for once and i find it so interesting and then like the the slot like look of it too the way it uses all the little like the big text thing like <laughs> the the like the x aid screens the finisher screens or the zero one finisher screens instead of finisher screens we got henshin screens and they match they use those henshin screens and i think that's really neat <laughs> okay okay <laughs> <laughs> this is the reason I laugh is because this is this is Magnum Boost. This this is not the Magnum Buckle, but for all intents and purposes, the form it makes would be the base form of our common rider. Actually, one thing I do have one like complaint-ish with the toy, and that if you notice, it said Fever Magnum, but in the show. It only says fever if it's a fever form. This had to have been magnum for it to say fever magnum, for this to say fever magnum in the show. The thing is, the buckles can't tell what's in the other side. Like, this can't, it doesn't know boost is here. It doesn't know if anything's over here. So it's not really like the sounds here are gonna change at all, unless they made some weird mode where it's like you. Unless they made some weird feature where hitting this, hitting a button will activate fever mode and other than that, it'll just say the name. In the show, it would have just said Magnum, not fever Magnum. Two in a row! <laughs> we did it! <laughs> Let's go! No. Big zombie hand. Last up on the docket is the latest toy at the time of this uh, recording, which of course was the campaign in which Tycoon's Core was released. We already took a look at the Tycoon Core, so there is our toys. Our? Mine. They're my toys. Oh, I like this. This is a nice size, actually. I mean, not compared to the one in the show, but it's nice. Sword. 
They've been doing this for all the Geats toys. They have LR44s in them. All of them, actually, I'm not sure if it's all of them, but at least this and the Magnum Shooter have LR44s in them. So they have batteries inside once you buy them, but they have an on-off switch. Now it's the way it works in the show. This is a normal form in the show. This is a power-up. And like they like this is so much bigger, it feels like it has a decent amount of weight. This is a little bit light, and it's power up. Oop, hit the button. Hit the button. Now we have Watch the Raising Sword. I haven't really spoken like uh, on this in a video at least like I love this power up the way it works where you've got this is I mean this is essentially an armed buckle it makes the armed buckle insertion sound it doesn't even have like a jingle kind of it's just great and then you get a sword as your armed weapon so it's like the the perfect evolution of the armed weapons special armed buckle that sums a special armed weapon which is then meant to be used to upgrade further or full charged. Oh, I love, I love that jingle. The standbys, the, the form is super cool. It's like a big robot thing. It's, I like, I like this a lot. If they released this at the beginning of Geats and were like, this is your desired driver, I'd be like, okay, yeah, it looks like a, it looks like a normal belt, but no, it's like, it's, it's not. Now I have to redo the whole engine. I just realized it's such a cool concept to have like this, for a season where you've got two slots to have this double part like form where you've got the the arm as i said it, it's like the super evolution of the armed weapons obviously you can pull the handle whenever you want but it's like it's super neat in the show where it's like you have to wait until it's fully charged to actually access the form it's like a video game common rider x aid reference <laughs> but they didn't do that in x aid so it's like mm. takahashi 2022 power up items thing they're both they're orange and blue and then Six years ago, he did another orange and blue-ish power-up. Both came out episode 13. I believe they both debuted. He definitely did not design both of these because he's a writer, but it's a funny coincidence. <laughs> I think it thought this was pulled out of the belt. That's it. They advertise this as like a form change or like you're going, which is true in the show. If you did this, we haven't seen it yet. If you did this, you go from cannon to jet because now orange is on top, but it's just a normal revolve on sound. I would have liked if they did something with that. The revolve on activates a little button here so it would have been kind of interesting if you revolved it went revolve on then the buckle goes like switching jets and cannon ready fight or like a like a smaller part of the jingle because obviously the jingles are the same whether you're jet or cannon so this obviously can't tell if you're switching from jet switching from cannon obligatory reference to the to the Seiken sword driver because they're kind of similar in terms of design. This is a little bit longer, but it makes a world of difference. Tension.
So that's been a Common Rider Geats unboxing. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Baiyi, for sponsoring this video. I had a lot of fun catching up on the Geats toys that I absolutely love and just chatting about them. I feel like I talked a lot about toys in addition to playing with them. If you would like your own Common Rider Geats toys, check out the Baiyi link, check out the links to the US releases if you so desire, and subscribe for my future Geats videos. Also be sure to check out my Patreon if you wanna see how you can see other videos early and with that i hope to see you next game